Earlier this week, Adobe announced a new feature in Photoshop which is absolutely wild. Instead of talking about it, why don't I go ahead and show you exactly what it does. Alright, so I have here opened the new Photoshop beta. This is a beta feature and I have an image here of a lady which I would like to do some compositing on. So for example, let's say we wanted to change the clothes she was wearing. Uh, previously, you'd have to do a lot of compositing work on that. But right now, all I have to do is just use the lasso tool to roughly select around the area that I want to change. It doesn't even have to be very accurate. Just roughly select that. And if you look right here to the bottom, there's this new contextual menu. This is a new feature in Photoshop. And right there, you see that I have this option for generative fill. And if you don't see that also, you can just right click on your selection and click on generative fill right here below the content aware fill. Now, what this generative fill option does is that it allows me to just type in a description of what I would like to fill this selection with. And in the background, Adobe is going to take that using AI, sending it to Adobe's Firefly, which is Adobe's generative image service, and generate the image that is supposed to fill in this spot. And it's going to do all of that magically in the background. So, for example, I want this lady to be wearing a suit and not uh, what she has on right now. So, I'll just type in a description of what what I want, which is a woman wearing a black suit. So I'm actually even putting the specific color and I'll click on generate. Now in the background, Adobe says that it's going to take that prompt that I've written, uh, take in the context of the actual image, refine the prompt a bit so that Firefly generates something accurate to this particular image and send that in the background to Firefly and then come back with the result. Look at that. Look how good this looks. Look how it matches the light and everything just blends automatically. This is quite amazing. And it gives you three options. So if you don't like that, there are three options you can select from here. So I click on this. This looks a little bit wonky. And then here you go. There is a third option. And I think this third option is the best of all. And one thing it also does is that this is a non-destructive edit. So if you go right here to your layer, you can see there is this new generative layer. It puts it on that particular layer. So I can turn it up for you to see the before. So this is the before. And when I turn it on, this is the after. I mean, just look how accurate this looks like. If you look at the, the, the lighting matches so perfectly, it's really, really, really amazing. This would have probably taken over an hour to just find images and try to composite this to look like this. And if you don't like any of these three images, you can actually just simply click on the generate option again right here. And it's going to give you another three options for you to look at. And you can keep doing that as many times as you want until you get exactly uh, what it is you're trying to do. Uh, in this case, I still feel like this third option that it generated earlier is still the best. So I'll use that. And we can do more. So let's say we want to add earrings. She's not wearing any earrings and I want to add earrings to her ears. So I'm just going to go right here next to her ears, roughly select the area around which I want the earring to be. And then I'm just going to type earrings and then I'll click on generate. And let's see what it comes up with. Look at that. <laughs> that is so uh, not very perfect, but that is really, really good. Really, really, really good. What more can we do? Let's try. How about we put chain the lipsticks that she has on? So I'm going to select around her mouth and then click on generate. And I'll just type a woman wearing bold red lipstick. And let's see what it does. And I'll click on generate. Wow. Look at that. With just a few text prompt and a click of a button. Look how good and how realistic this looks. And if you're wondering how to get access to it, it's only available in the beta version of Photoshop. And to enable that, you want to go to your creative cloud. And then right here to the left, you would see beta apps. So click on that and find Photoshop. So it's going to be one of these apps. I already have it installed here, but yours is going to be below here where it says desktop apps. And all you have to do is just click on install and you're going to have this version of Photoshop right now. And you can do everything that I'm doing in this video. So what else can you do? How about changing an entire background or changing the scene that a picture belongs to? It can also do that and let's see how that works. Because we do a lot of animation tutorials on this channel, I'm going to use a cartoon illustration to show this second example. So right here I have an illustration here of two boys. And let's say I want to change where they are and change the background. Right now they're just in a white background but I want to change that. So I'm going to click right here where it says select subject for it to select the two boys and you can also do that by going to select and select subject so it's gonna select the two boys out of the background but that's not what i want i want the background so in the contextual menu there's this option here that says invert selection so now it's selecting the background and not the boys so now let's try to fill this up with something so i'm gonna cl click right here on generative fill 
and then I'm going to say a cartoon vector art illustration of two boys playing in a playground. If you notice here, I added the keywords cartoon and added vector art and illustration. This is so that it brings a star, the style that it generates will match with what the boys are. So like cartoonish kind of style. Look at that. That is really, really amazing. Look how well it blends uh, with the scene. You can take this, use it for your comic book or anything like that. And let's see other options uh, that it generated. Look at that in this one it actually even added another character so it generated another cartoon character to match it looks like the same style as if it was actually drawn uh with the same two boys that we added this is really 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 amazing but i think i generally prefer the first one and the great thing about all of this is that if i take this and merge it with a tool like adobe character animator which is already using ai to animate the puppets i can actually say for example i can take out these boys from this background and replace it with one of the existing puppets in Adobe Character Animator, like the superhero girl here. And I can create an animation and create a story to all of this, like this one here. Hey, where did everyone go? And the good thing is that if my animation has a scene tool, I can just simply type exactly what scene tool should look like. And I have a background generated for scene tool. And I can just continue using the AI in Adobe Character Animator to generate my animations. This is really lowering the barrier to entry to creative work like animations and things like this. And I probably assume that at some point in time, we might even see this directly added into Adobe Character Animator. And if you're wondering about how I did that animation, I actually have a separate tutorial which is coming out pretty soon, probably sometime next week, uh, explaining how how to create short animated stories using AI. So do be on the watch out for that. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification so you get notified when that comes out. So I'll cover all of how I did all of that in more detail in that tutorial. But let's head back to this tool in Photoshop. All right, what else can it do? How about extending an existing image? So for example, I have this picture here of a little boy out in the grass and I want to extend it, make it a different aspect ratio. So I'm gonna press C. Uh, that brings up the uh, crop tool and then I'm going to hold option or control on the windows option on the Mac control on the windows and I can drag right here just drag to extend so this is going to extend uh, my canvas so you can see now this has the aspect ratio of this has changed but I now have this white blank spaces and I want to fill this so I'm going to just use again uh, my uh, selection tool and just select that area and go back to generative fill. This time around, I'll actually leave it blank. You can leave it blank and let the AI decide what it wants to use to fill that space. So I'll click on generate and look at that. It's generated additional images to match that. It even tried to match the shadow. That's actually very amazing. If you look at that, it extended the shadow for the boy into, into, into the new generated image. And we can check all the three options. I think I prefer this first one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on the other side. And look at that it generated that and matched it so perfectly but what about how about if you wanted to extend this and do some more compositing on this say i wanted to add a soccer ball on here that is also quite easy to do so i'm going to create my ellipse tool and i'm just going to make a circle around where i want the soccer ball to be and then i'm going to type soccer ball And uh, this first option looks weird. <laughs> uh, the second one is not a soccer ball. Uh, let's see the third one. Oh, look at that. Look at that third option. That looks so good. Look, look how well it matches the light. If we zoom in here, you can see the light is hitting the ball exactly the same way it's hitting the boy's stomach. And the shadow that has been cast on the boy is also been cast on the soccer ball. This is really mind blowing, actually. This is really, 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 really amazing. The way it matches and blends so seamlessly, it's quite amazing. So let's go ahead and even add a few more things to this. So I'm going to select his shoes because those don't look like soccer boots. I'll select two of them and then I'm going to type a young boy wearing soccer boots. And let's see what it comes up with. Look how well this blends. It's even You can even see the shoe going into the grass like he's stepping his foot. This is really, really, really amazing. And look at the second option we have here. And let's look at the third option. Okay, the, here the leg looks a little bit off. Uh, I think this second option with the blue shoes looks just perfectly great. Just, I'm still amazed at how well it just tries to blend everything. I can even go ahead and do a little bit more. Uh, let's create maybe a uh, spot cone. So I'm going to click on spot cones and let's see what it does. Look at that. See how, again, I'm still intrigued at how it still tries to match the shadow to the direction of the light. If you look everywhere in this picture, the shadows are casted 
at the right direction this is really 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 amazing i look at some other options this one looks a little bit off uh this is not too bad i think ultimately this might be uh the best but you can just see how great and how easy it is to create uh things out of this with very very little effort so far i've only shown you how to extend an existing image but you can also start from scratch using this tool so right here i have a blank canvas open and i want to start generating something out of nothing so i'm going to select my use my selection tool and just drag in the general canvas area to select the area where i want to generate and then i'm just going to right click again and just say generate a field and this time around i'm going to type a fantasy cottage overgrown with asian trees with dramatic lighting to create something looking very dramatic and i'm going to say generate and as you can see it generated that look how great this looks this is very very amazing and then i can use this as a base for my compositing pro uh, project if i wanted to add some few more things birds in the sky and things like that you can just keep highlighting and describing what you want it to do or even take this out to another tool and maybe animate it like this one here if you're enjoying this video make sure you subscribe to this channel for more i have seen a lot of comments online of people worried that we shouldn't be happy about this advancement as they will replace artists and take jobs away but here are my thoughts on that when photoshop was first introduced some 30 years ago did this replace traditional artists those who use the, the paint brushes and whatnot not really uh the appetite for those kinds of art are still there today and we still uh, patronize those kinds of art i think what really happened was that a lot of artists embraced photoshop and used it as another tool uh in their set of tools to advance their art and you see we transitioned into things like digital art and other forms of art that came as a result of tools like photoshop so i think that's what we're going to see more of because i believe that art be it music uh paintings or any other kind of art is an expression of the creativity of the human mind and i don't think any tool be it AI or not can actually take that away humans would always find a way to be creative and will always evolve as things change so i think what we're going to see is people leveraging these ai tools and other sort of tools that are coming up now to create different kinds of art art that we couldn't do before just because of limitations and then we're also going to probably see other people who have had imaginations have had ways to visualize artistic things but just didn't have the skills to do it now have ways to leverage ai tools like this to create a beautiful piece of art but again like with everything only time will tell i might be wrong uh, let me know what you think in the comments i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye <laughs>